Hello, and welcome to the Underpaid Gamers Podcast. My name is Tony. I'm with my friend and colleague, Justin. Yo. Hello. Hello. Today we're talking about a whole bunch of, a slew of different things. Sports. Esports. Esports. Movies, TV shows. Video games. Video games. And game retailers. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome. So much more. What's up? So what have you been up to recently, Tony? Nothing. Playing games. Working on my platinum collection. It was your birthday! Oh yeah, that too. Yesterday. Hey guys, it's Tony's birthday, so give him a shout out. Thanks. hey We played a card game called Monikers. And it was awesome. It was fun. So you have... Oh, I guess we're talking about card games today too. Uh-oh. Uh, so you have like 40 cards. Mm-hmm. And we only have four players. And on each card, it's very much like a... It's like Taboo. Or catchphrase, mm-hmm. where it has a word that you try to get other people to guess. Yeah. In the first round, you can say as many words and gestures as you want. The second round, you can only say one, one word. word. And the third round, you can't say any words, Just only gestures. It's so funny. So it's a lot of fun. But the, you use the same cards for all three rounds. Uh-huh. Um, so eventually, you things get associated with that card that you understand. Yeah. It was a lot of so, fun. for instance, if the card said something crazy like rink or at or something like that, you would have to then describe it. Then one word, and then gesture. Yes. But you don't know how you would do that with Rink Rat. That's I don't even know what that is. That doesn't matter. I would not guess that. I can, fig- I can make you figure it out. Okay. Either way, uh, let's get going on the news this week. Sweet. Uh, so first and foremost, the Super Bowl happened. And there was a lot of stuff that went down in the Super Bowl. There was quite a few touchdowns. All the way, well, song more about commercials. Oh, okay. Those things. But Tom Brady yeah, got his uh, fifth Super Bowl ring. Uh-oh. Therefore... He is one gem away from a full Infinity Gauntlet. So really, the real enemy of the world is not Thanos. No. It is Tom Brady. Tom Brady. He's so close. Or he's going to be on the Avengers. One or the other. But they already have somebody from New England. They have Captain America and That's Spider-Man true. sometimes. Occasionally. From time to time. Literally, Tom Brady? What's he going to do? Throw a football? How is that any more effective than throwing a shield? I don't know. I feel like a shield would be way more effective, unless that football's made out of... You think Tom Brady would be more effective than, like, Hawkeye? No. Are you sure? Unless the, unless the footballs were like Hawkeye's arrows, where yeah. you could, like, program had, like, different things. trick footballs? That'd be interesting. I still think Hawkeye has a further range. Definitely. I definitely like, I like sure. Hawkeye better than Tom Brady. Just, just by sheer character. Okay. Really? Yeah. But it's okay. I don't think you can deflate arrows, but that's just me. Well, some of his <laughs> arrows have like a a blow up punching, like mm-hmm. blow up uh, mm-hmm. punching glove on the end, mm-hmm. boxing glove to so be inflate, so you could deflate that. I suppose. Anyway, Super Bowl, Infinity and there is, there was uh, trailers that went wrong with the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. One that took the world by storm dun, dun, was Stranger dun. Things number two. I know, season two, so exciting. Coming in Halloween. Mm-hmm. 2017. Um, when we watched Stranger Things the first time, I was not... I really liked it. It was a mm-hmm. lot of... Well, I liked it for the most part. It was fun. But mm-hmm. I wanted season two to be different characters, be something else completely. Mm-hmm. We did not get that. Nope. We have the same people. They're back. Um, so what do you think of that? Because the whole first mm-hmm. season, there's four... There's three kids. Mm-hmm. There's Eleven. And then there's Will, who you don't see at all. Mm-hmm. And now in season four, Will's going to be there. Yeah. Which, at the end of the last season, it was clear that things still weren't right with Will. Like, he, when he like after he was having dinner, he, like, felt really bad, and he, like, went and sneezed, and then he went into the Underdark, the Underground. The Upside Down. Upside Down. Underdark. No, that's wrong. Um, upside Down, and then he, like, sneezed, and it go back, and then he, like, had a worm come out of his nose or something. I don't remember that at all. Yeah. At the very end, that happened. So you knew at the end that that wasn't going to be... Uh, that was going to be a new a new thing coming. And then yeah. also the sheriff got taken by those g- government people. I do like the sheriff, though. I liked, I mean, I like the characters, but I did think it, it would have been a cooler show if every season was different. Yes! That's you know, so just awesome. like American Horror Story or... Um, Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Like, that would be so cool because we haven't had a show like that in a long time that's been pretty good other than American Horror Story. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it will be fun to go back to these characters. I like the characters. But at the same time, it's just... Like, I think they could do more if they just had refreshes every time. You yeah. Know? Tell more stories that were crazier. 
Because eventually what they're going to do now that they've chosen to follow the same characters, there's only so many things they can do. They automatically limit themselves with that. Mm-hmm. Because eventually their their characters are going to run out of things to talk so, about. So now this has to be surrounded around the, uh, the upside down. Mm-hmm. And the characters as opposed to, like, you could do something completely different. You could do, mm-hmm. like... And how many 80s horror tropes are there going to be? I don't know. I mean, they're going to add some more, and there was a Ghostbusters reference and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but... I guess we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with it. I'm excited still, because I like the first season. It's still out a ways. A couple mm-hmm. months. For sure. What about uh, something that's a little bit closer? Iron Fist. That trailer dropped. Another Netflix property. Yeah. Uh, March 17. Excited? It's coming soon. It? I did see the trailer. Uh, you know, I don't really feel connected to this character very much. Uh, I'm excited. The reason I'm excited is because I don't know this character at all. You know, where I knew Daredevil going in, I had some preconceived notions, had seen the movie, I knew of Daredevil, Okay. had some things. Iron Fist, no, nothing Jessica about. Jessica Jones? Jessica Jones, same thing. Luke Cage. Didn't know anything about those guys either. <laughs> oh, really? Only Daredevil. The only one I can't. So, I'm not like, with Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, you know, I was excited because Daredevil was so good. Yeah. Now that those two have come out to varying amounts of success, Iron Fist to me, I'm excited to see this new character. I don't. I mean, obviously, the last defender it makes a reference to that, so the defenders is going to be a thing. Yeah. Um, hopeful. Excited. Did it look fun? Did you see the combat? Combat looked fun. Mm-hmm. See the Iron Fist. Yeah, I saw the hallway scene. His Iron Fist. Just like Daredevil had a hallway scene. Okay. Just because. I want to say this straight. <laughs> okay. Just because there's a fight in a hallway does not make it a hallway scene. It's a hallway scene. The reason Literally, the hallway, hallway scene was so good in Daredevil one, so it was all one shot. It was yeah. a continuous take. Now, every other one has had a fight in a hallway, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, this one has a hallway scene. No, it does not. <laughs> it has a fight in a hallway. Mm-hmm. It is not a hallway scene. Well, let's see if it's continuous or not, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, that would be awesome. I love it. I remember in Daredevil <laughs> Season 2, they had the stairway scene, yeah. where it was all one continuous fight down the stairway. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll get another I'm stairway tired, scene. Tired of this <laughs> hallway business. Like, fights are cool just because they're in hallways? No. Mm-hmm. So are you excited for Iron Fist? Yeah, it looks awesome. What do you know more about? I'm assuming you know more about Iron Fist than I do. Yeah. Tell what me. What can you, you tell know? me like? Um, tell me about him a little bit. So give me some context. I guess the main context behind him is that obviously there's Rand Industries in New York, which mm-hmm. is uh, just a big enterprise, big corporation, mm-hmm. uh, ran by Danny Rand is Iron Fist. Okay. He's the main. I got character. that from the trailer. Okay. Um, his mom and his dad together, married, happy. Uh, Worked on the company, and also his dad's best friend okay. were all, like, the heads of the company. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. I can't... I don't remember the cause of it, but uh, Danny and his mom and his dad and his dad's best friend were all going to, like, the Himalayas to go, like, rock climbing or something, just mm-hmm. as an excursion. Sure. Accidents happened. Mom and dad died. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad and friend died. Danny Rand was the only one that was alive. He got taken to Shambhala or Shangri-La or whatever, Cthune mm-hmm. or whatever... Uh, the Shadow Realm, for yeah, my yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! reference <laughs> per episode. Nice. To be trained for years as a martial artist. He's also the the Iron Fist, is the protector of that realm. Mm-hmm. And in that realm, there's... Uh, in, the, in his intro comic, there's like a giant zombie... Uh, giant robot zombie dragon... That okay. he fights in the first comic. Zombie Robot Dragon. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. That seems like a lot. That has the face of his father. What? Yeah. This so got even more complex. That's like the first fight that's in, in the comic. Obviously, we're not going to see that in this. That's way too far out. That's so um, far so out. So I don't even think we're going to see him. We might see a little bit of him in that place when he's learning as flashbacks, but definitely not. I think the trailer showed him coming back to New York. I think it's going to be episode number one. Mm-hmm. It's going to go from there. And um, all season, we're going to get his backstory. Yeah. Turns out, spoilers that the accident was orchestrated by the dad's best friend so the dad's best friend could take control of the company. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that Danny survived. Mm -hmm. So now Danny's coming back to take back his company that is his birthright from his dad's friend friend Mm -hmm. who had turned on him. So his dad's friend killed mom and pop, Mm -hmm. assumed killed Danny, didn't work. So now Danny's coming back to take control of it. So So now there's going to be a somewhat of of a political type businessy aspect to this where yeah. he's trying to get his company back but also you see that there are some villains in this that also have powers like we've seen in most other Marvel Netflix series sure so that's the premise of season one that mm-hmm. we'll see 
and eventually he'll either get it back or he won't get it back. I honestly don't know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you saw Claire in the trailer. Yeah, she's so in all she's of them. back. She's in all of them. She's back. Um, I don't know if we're gonna see any other characters in this one. I the least character I would expect to see would be Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, she's always doing her own thing. Mm-hmm. And Danny Rand is kind of more of like a take care of it yourself. He's still kind of young, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit naive. I mean, he's also been away for years, so that okay. some of this stuff he might not be very familiar with. Or what's been going on. Yeah. I wonder if he knows about the attack on New York that they reference sometimes. I don't know. We'll see. Because it's been... If this... When did... Uh, so Daredevil came out 2016 or 2015? Because Attack on it New York was, happened in 2012. I want to say... According to our timeline. Wasn't like it... Like, real life. Wasn't it the fall of 2014? It might have been. I think it was the fall of 2014. So if, if the Netflix is continuous with time like we are in the real world... Yeah. Then maybe this... The Attack on New York was like four years ago. Yeah. So maybe not. So maybe they won't know. I mean, they'll still be recovering from it, but it won't be as big of a deal. Right. Now maybe the might, might be a scene in the whole season. the Sokovia Accords might be bigger because Civil War just happened. Right. Um, so we'll see. But Danny Rand is an expert martial artist. He has the Iron Fist, which is essentially puts all of his potential energy into a fist, and then he can punch things really hard and make them blow up. Right. Which is like kind of a, it's like interesting power. I mean, it's not He's really like underwhelming a little bit. Yeah, it's not super great. I mean, it's better than like Luke Cage. He's just kind of strong and tough, and Jessica Jones is just kind of strong and tough. And Daredevil Gunshot. probably is arguably the best character we've had because but isn't a superpower just being able to hear everything and know where everything is no he's like he's blind so all of his other senses are stronger so he fight well first of all he fights blind which is awesome right I mean, it's super luke, cool. luke cage just flails his arms right but to me it seems like he doesn't have any supernatural powers who daredevil, daredevil. does he have any supernatural yeah powers? he got a when he got his eyesight lost he was splashed in the face with like nuclear acid mm-hmm. so then it, it gave him like that spider sense where he can see when he hears technically he sees the world on fire is what he says okay. is what he says and what you kind of see mm-hmm. so he sees everything on fire he can hear things uh, we've seen that in F- Daredevil season 1 and 2 mm-hmm. and even somewhat in the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck mm-hmm. it's all kind of based around the same lore but he also has he heals faster he's stronger okay. he has better reaction time he's he's a superhuman. okay um Honestly, if he got in a fight with Captain America, I believe Captain America would probably win. But mm-hmm. in the comic books, Daredevil's legit. Is it? Like, Daredevil's, like, ripped. Like, bigger than Captain America. Just, like, huge. Dang. In, in, in the Netflix, not so much. He's not so more much. Of a, more of a normal person. Yeah. So if we were taking Chris Evans versus Marvel, Marvel Netflix, yeah, definitely, Daredevil. Definitely Captain America. I think Captain America would win. Right. Um... But Daredevil does have some potential stuff. He, I mean, he's on par with Spider-Man in the comics and in, like, some of the older stuff. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man's... Right. Biases aside, you are Spider-Man biased, yeah. is very strong <laughs> and very quick. Yes. And very agile. Mm-hmm. I wonder who's, whose Spidey sense is better, Spider-Man or Daredevil. Daredevil's? Spider-Man can only, um... Spider-Man can only... His Spider-Sense only kicks in when something's, like, going to be... Hitting, like something's danger to him, mm-hmm. um, whereas Daredevil just sees everything sees all the time and kind of kind of slow motion type. Okay, thing. cool. So that's what we can expect from Iron Fist season one. A lot of I, there's going to be from what I expect, mm-hmm. there's going to be more better combat in this mm-hmm. than definitely Luke Cage because how hard can that be? Yep. And Jessica Jones because <laughs> there wasn't a lot of combat in Jessica Jones. Right. Daredevil season one had a lot of good combat. It was a lot of. Uh, Daredevil kind of brawling his way through things, like mm-hmm. fighting to his very last breath. Mm-hmm. I think Iron Fist is going to be more, he's untouchable. Mm-hmm. He's just going to be martial arts and the poop out of people. Yeah. That'll be awesome. So it'll be, so every so every kind of combat we've seen so far is all going to be different. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be very, very martial arty, where Daredevil is very brawler. Yeah, he's more like boxing. A, you want him on your side in the bar fight. Yeah. Daredevil. Well, I mean, I mean you, also... take, you take Danny <laughs> Rand too, but. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Just like bar fighting. Like so what I, from what like. I understand from Danny Rand's character, he's more, he's kind of like a smart mouth, like mm-hmm. Spider Man is, okay. kind of not young like that, obviously, mm-hmm. but kind of smart and uh, maybe kind of uses humor to hide his fear okay. and his insecurities. Um, so hopefully we'll see some humor in the in the show. That'll be a lot more fun. Sure. This might be a lot more lighthearted than all the other ones. It is just as violent, still just as gory. We saw some of that in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, but it'll be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Cool. March uh, March 17 can't get here soon enough. But there's also a lot of things between that and then. Yes. Like Horizon Zero Dawn, mm-hmm. which is not coming out soon enough. Two more weeks. We're almost there. We're almost there. Um, 
The Switch release, March 3rd. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda is also March 3rd? It's around there. Early March. And then, I guess then it would be Iron Fist, and then Prey comes out April? Or yep. May? Uh, May. I oh, think it's May like something. May 12th? Anyway. Could be wrong. Super excited for Iron Fist. Very cool. I'm more excited now that you've talked to me about it. I'm glad. <laughs> Hopefully everybody can be more excited now. Yep. See some good old... Oh, do you see this giant dragon tattoo on his chest? Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You get that in the Himalayas? I, I don't know if it's a tattoo, if it's more like a like a burn mark, like they put it on him. Mm. Like I said, he's a protector of that realm. So, oh, I didn't tell you. So, because he's a pre- protector of that realm, he kind of left that world behind to go back to his father's company. Yeah. So, they want him to come back because um, he is the protector. And without him, they don't have really any defenses. Okay. So, maybe there's going to be something between that and this. There's going to be some sort of tension in the... In the first season about that. Yeah. Some references to it. Yeah, like he needs to go back there to do his duty. Mm-hmm. But also he wants to do... Because he's... Essentially, he's f- torn in two. Yeah. Between New York City and... Between the real place. world and the realm that he's been... Yeah, the, he has two responsibilities. Yeah. Um, so. Cool. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. So, uh, Call of Duty, huh? Call we, of Duty. We got some Call of Duty news this we week. We got two things two to things. Call of Duty news. Exactly. We have good news... And, and bad news. we have news. expected news. And I would say that it's bad, but yes. it doesn't really affect me because we I like haven't it. bought into the newest so round. Of the Call news, Duty. before we get in deeper and people are like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Uh, the bad news is that Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, the remastered version of the game they made, mm-hmm. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, yep. has now and has always had supply drops. Yes, but something has been added to these supply drops. At uh, nauseum. Yes. Is they've added weapon camos, skins, yep. and melee weapons, and people are like, okay, this sucks. Whatever, they're not ranged weapons. Not, not Turns out, it. four days later, dun, they added dun, dun, three dun. ranged weapons. Um, I know one is a shotgun, there's two other crap. And some data miners on PC found out they're going to be adding more weapons, more ranged weapons down the line. Gosh dang it! So not only did they take the game that a lot of people liked, because it was so bare bones and so close to the original, but mm. now they have... Changed it for the worse. I can think They've of, added our newest, most hated feature to I can think of some not safe for work lines to put in there. We're not going to I'm say that. I'm not them. going to. But, Just imagine in this silence coming up that mm. we said all of them. All right. Glad we got that out of the way. All right. So they're adding weapons. Yes. To one, weapons that were not originally in the game, mm-hmm. weapons that were changed the balance of the game, mm-hmm. undoubtedly. Undoubtedly, they're going to be better in some way than whatever class yeah. they're in. And it's always, it's the same. You can get them through supply drops. Uh, they said that you can buy them with, like, the scrap zone supply drops. Uh, you can get weapons and camos and decals. You also get, like, packs of scrap, and the scrap is what you can use to buy mm-hmm. more supply drops. Mm-hmm. And I guess they said if you get enough scrap, you can then buy the weapons outright, so it doesn't necessarily revolve around luck. Could yeah. also buy them with COD points, which is you pay Money. US dollars to get COD points. <sighs> so frustrating. It's frustrating for the future. Right, because our good news coming might be affected news. by this. It will be affected by this 100%. Um, we haven't bought the most recent Call of Duty, mostly as a protest because of supply drops. Yep. And because we don't like it. It doesn't sound like it's It doesn't fun. sound fun. I'd rather go play another shooter. Which Honestly. we have. Which we have. We've done... You've platinum Battlefield 1. True. Uh, I've played Battlefield 1, bought it. Um, Overwatch played the crap out of that game. Yep. All in protest. So I don't want to play Call of Duty. Call of Duty, despite popular reprehension for it, is a fun game at the core, right? Right. It has good fun. It has fun gameplay. Yes. Right? And it's... The shooting and the reaction is all very pristine. Yeah. It's like the epitome of what a good it's, shooter should it's be. It's the standard, right? Yeah, that's the standard. The gameplay itself. Now, mm-hmm. the games itself have gone off the rails, and that's a train wreck. Yeah, story-wise, but also the added features and things, which we've been Well, discussing. the stories are really good. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Sometimes. Sometimes they're not good. Sometimes they're good. I don't know. I always want longer, but... Oh, but on the whole, they're pretty good. They they should be wor- they're worth playing. Yeah, at least once. Yeah. Um... So that comes along with news very recently. I think uh, February 7th is when they tweeted out that they're going to put guns in Call of Duty. And it's now February 12th. So five days ago. Mm -hmm. Um, They also announced 
the lead designer behind Call of Duty at EA or whatever, mm-hmm. um, Activision, said that Call of Duty in 2017 is going to be going back to its roots. Which that only means one thing. There's no other thing that it could mean besides going back to World uh, War II, right? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe that. I, mean, I, it, I didn't think of it as World War II. I just thought of it as um, not jetpacking. Huh. See, to me, I interpreted that as it's going back to World War II. And maybe. that would make sense to That'd me be cool. because of the success, success of Battlefield One mm-hmm. with the World War I. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to me, that's what it sounds like. However, Call of Duty that One, is, Call of Duty Two, Call of Duty Big. That is reactionary because they've been working on this game for three years, and Battlefield One just came out last year. That's true, but they could have been planning it before Battlefield One. That's true. But also, right. how long does it take to make a Call of Duty game? Like they they use the same engine every single time. Right. I mean, I guess they use jetpacking, but now if they take out jetpacking, that'd be great. It's the same. It's the same engine. Right. So very exciting news that it's going back to its roots, with e- which either means war that war that war world. That'd be cool. World, World War, II. War II would be awesome. Mm-hmm. World War II era, yeah. but also no jetpacks. So that's really good news. Until days later, they came out and said that there's going to be weapon drops in Modern Warfare Remastered. So now you can guarantee there's going to be supply drops right. and weapon they're drops gonna, in the new one. They're going to take away that feature. They're going to keep that feature. Yeah, why wouldn't them? I mean, they've had dollars. it enough times, and apparently they're sucking enough money down with it that it's worth it for them to do it. Yes. So they're going to continue doing it. Mm-hmm. As a business practice, makes sense for them. I get that. Still hate it. <laughs> Agreed. Still hate it. So we will eventually we'll have a topic on game releases in fall of 2017. But we yeah. already know some that are coming out. Mm-hmm. And I want to be clear, and I said this many times before, Spider-Man for PS4, mm-hmm. not coming out in 2017. I expect spring of 2018. Mm-hmm. There's a reason, because fall of 2017 is going to be packed with incredible games. There's going to be a new Call of Duty that's back at World War II era. Mm -hmm. That's going to sell like crazy. Infinite Warfare was the highest selling game of 2016. Mm -hmm. Even though people didn't like it. Even it had a bunch of critical, like, uh, people. Yeah. Especially in their esports league. Yeah. Um, So there's that. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a new Battlefield game, but there is going to be one of the most expected games, Red Dead Redemption 2, Mm -hmm. 2017 fall. That'll be exciting. So that's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. There's going to be... uh, Kingdom Super- Hearts 3. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey mm-hmm. for the Switch is going to be coming out in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff on my mind that I couldn't think of anymore. But some good stuff. Yeah. For sure. There's definitely a lot of competition, and Spider-Man has no place in that. Like, yeah, why, it- would, why would you send him out to die? Why would you send anything Why would you send anything up against Call of Duty when they're going back to World War II? No one would do that. Wouldn't that be insane? That makes like, it's a bad decision. Like that's what happened with Titanfall and Watch Dogs Two. Remember, people only have so much money to spend. Yeah, in that time period, in November to Christmas, right? And that's not yeah, and that's not why Mass Effect is coming out. Mass Effect, I think, could hold its own in fall, but they're putting it out in March. Well, why not? Uh, Prey is coming out in April. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn was going to come out in the fall, but then they pushed it back, either for development issues or because they just wanted to make the most for their money. Because that's six months later. Um, so in my head, there's a lot of things going on on fall of 2017. I totally forgot what is, else is coming out. But... Praise coming out May 5th. Oh, praise coming out May 5th. Okay. Uh, I mean, you, there's a lot going on. There's 2017 is going to be insane. Yep. A lot of and we'll games. see. I don't think, even with all that, Call of Duty is still going to be number one. Even with Red Dead Redemption 2 coming out. It's still going to be number one. Yeah. Call of Duty probably won't win any Game of the Year awards. Well, Red Dead 2 will. Yeah. Probably. That's my guess. That'd be fun. That'd be cool. So anyways. So there's some news. Call of Duty news. Some Call of Duty news. Call of Duty, one of the most popular games. Yeah. And so we need to discuss it. We do. And we did. We did. Um, some more news coming out. Final Fantasy XV. If you have been into that game at all, if you pay attention uh, to some of the stuff we've released, uh, I've played a lot of that game. I planned them. You planned them. Uh, and so the DLC uh, so far has been free. They did a Chocobo Mog Carnival, which was a big disappointment to me. Giant um, chicken rooster. But that wasn't like the DLC that they had in the season pass. They were going to do one episode for each of the side characters that are with you. Oh, yeah? The main character group. Uh, so episode Gladio and episode Prompto are both been teased in a trailer for March and for June. Gladio coming up first. In addition to some other... Wait, which one's Gladio? Uh, Gladio is the big guy with the sword. And a scar on his face. Uh, what's the main character's name? Noctis. 
Who's Prompto? Prompto is the guy with the guns. Who Who's likes to take the... selfies. Uh, what's the third guy's name? Ignis. He's the cook. I don't know these characters. It's okay. Um, so yeah, they're going to do it. And I'm excited for it because in the storyline, like, Gladio kind of leaves for, for a hot minute. For like a chapter of the game, he's gone. And I'm guessing that this is going to be about that. Um, I like Gladio a lot. He's Him or Ignis are like my favorite. I don't know. Probably Gladio is my favorite character uh, besides Noctis in the game. So we're going to get an extended DLC for him specifically episode. And then later on, again, Prompto, which he is like taken for a while. Yeah. That's when he gets line. a scar. Um, that's when Gladio gets a scar. Oh. Prompto gets taken for a while. And in the storyline, spoilers, he learns that he's actually, like, created by Nilfheim, like, the evil empire. Like, he's one of their um, creations. And so, to some, I'm guessing his realization of that and what how that happens is what's going to... How is he... How, how do they create life? It's a big, long story. You don't... You probably don't is want to Is he a robot? Uh, is he a dragon zombie robot? He's not a robot. With the face of his father? He's not a robot. That's too bad. But... Robots pretty cool. They are pretty cool. So anyways, we're going to get both those episodes. We'll see how well they are, how good they are. I'll probably download Gladio, and depending on how good that is, I might get Prompto. Um, I'm I'm usually not one to buy season passes for things. Yeah. Just because I I get done with the game. We talked about that last week. We did. Um, So we'll see what happens with it, but I'll probably at least get Gladio and see see what's going on. Yeah, and so if you want to, uh, I mean, you can just Google the the trailer and you'll find they reference all the new updates besides that. Gladio and Prompto being the two biggest things that they announce in the updates. Is, so there's not going to be Battlefield this week, this uh, year, is there going to be Battlefront 2? Battlefront, I don't know when Battlefront 2 is going to release, I just know that Battlefield, the execs have said they're not going to come out with a Battlefield for a while. They're putting it on the back burner is what they said. I'm trying. Which I'm is looking good. through. I'm happy about that. Um, a list by some website that lists all the games that are that they think are gonna be released in 2017. Yeah. And I made it all the way down to the bottom of the list. I'm like, okay, this is possible. This is possible. Then it says Spider Man for PS4. I'm like, this list sucks. <laughs> it's not <laughs> gonna happen. First. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. Why would they do that? Yep. Unreliable. Um. Yeah. So Final Fantasy news. Fun. Exciting. You excited? Uh, you know, I I'm excited. Which is your favorite not main character? Gladio. I already said that. <laughs> My bad. That's okay. Him or Ignis, but probably Gladio. Because of his sword. Because he's just like the most... He's, he's a like, Highlander. Yeah, he's just kind of a boss. Prompto is like a little dweeb who you need to like, I don't know, encourage and like make sure he feels part of the group all the time. And Gladio's just like, what are you doing? Do better. Stop sucking. Huh. Be strong. So he's like that all the time. So he's like a baby boomer. Yeah. Whereas the other guy is more like a millennial. Yeah, sure, if you want to go by stereotypes. Yes, I do. I don't know what Ignis would be. Maybe Generation X. What's the, well, I mean, what's what's the point of him? Uh, he's kind of... He's a good fighter. His own tempo. And he's, like, kind of wise, but he's not... Yeah, I guess he's kind of wise. He kind of, like, makes the plans and stuff. I don't <laughs> know how that's Generation X, but... I don't know if there's a stereotype. I don't know what the stereotype is for Generation X, other than 80 metalheads. Yeah! Slayer! Yeah! So... Movie news. Okay. The Batman is what they're calling the Batman movie that Ben Affleck no longer is directing, mm-hmm. but it's still, as of right now, He's acting st- in right, um, and producing. They have a new director in Matt Reeves. Mm, so Matt it's an Reeves. update from last week. What? Because we didn't know this last week. No, correct. So not only are they calling it the Batman, which I don't know if that's the official name or not, mm-hmm. but Matt Reeves has signed on. Matt Reeves has been responsible for writing and directing... Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War of the Planet of the Apes. Okay. And he's also directed Cloverfield. Mm. Those all had some amount of success. Yeah, so they're all pretty good. I mean, that's not... There's all, there's some other things he did, He yeah. has done before that I did not recognize. Those he also did ones. a... Uh, pretty much a whole TV series. A couple, like, 30, 40 episodes or Do you something. Know what it was called? No. Okay. No idea. But, Do you know, know the Planet of the Ape movies, I've, I've enjoyed those. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Yeah. They got somebody who actually has done something before. That's good. He's also, I mean, he also has writing experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, so so does Ben Affleck. But maybe, because one of the reasons Ben Affleck left is people kept asking him when it's going to be ready. He's like, it's not going to be ready until there's a script. And there's not a script yet. Essentially, is what he, between the lines is what mm-hmm. he's saying. Yeah. So maybe if they have a, a director writer, they'll be like, maybe they'll get it done more. Or also, maybe they'll just push it out and it'll just kind of suck. 
We'll see what happens. We'll so far, I've not been too, super excited with DC movies, but we'll probably still see them because I feel like we have to. <laughs> yep. Except for Wonder Woman. We probably won't see that because it's supposed to be really bad. I'll probably still see it. <sighs> I go see movies all the time. You know, I went and saw John Wick yesterday. John Wick 2. What have you seen John Wick 1? I've, I haven't seen either, but I've heard they're really good and I should see them. They're awesome. Let me tell you why. Uh, John Wick is the whole before... Hmm. No spoilers. Okay. I'm not going to spoil you. anything. Thank you. Um, it is a very good action movie. Keanu Reeves is John Wick. He's the main character. Yeah. In the first movie, he is... It's kind of in this universe where mm. there's a secret society. Okay. It's not... That's stupid sounding, but that's the only way I can explain it. So, when I think of... Time out. When I think of secret societies, I kind of think of like the assassins from Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. And they have all that stupid BS that goes along with it. Yeah. It's not that. This okay. is more an underground... Uh, hitman division mm-hmm. that takes place globally. Okay. Um, to where uh, they have these all specific rules and they're all honor bound. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't do this specific thing. You don't do this specific thing. If you own a, if you have a debt to somebody, yeah, you cannot then hurt that person to get out of your debt. You have to complete the debt and then after that, if you decide to go and kill that person, you can do that. That's fine. Okay. Nobody's gonna look down on you for that. Okay. But as long as you owe, have a debt to somebody, you can't do this. You can't do that. Okay. Uh, there's this place. One of my favorite parts of the universe they made is called the Continental. It's a hotel. Mm. It's like a global hotel chain. Okay. Where everyone that goes to the Continental is part of this underground division of hitmen. Mm-hmm. And the rule is there can be no bloodshed, no business done on the Continental grounds. So if you're getting chased, this you never see this happen because everyone kind of fights honorably. Mm. But if you're being chased and you're like a block away from Continental, and as soon as you step foot in the ground, if somebody... Uh, causes you harm or draws blood on the ground Mm -hmm. of the Continental, they're, like, killed. Immediately? Yeah. Like, barred for life, killed, whatever. Yeah. Um, And everyone understands that. Everyone that's part of this group understands that. And they all have their own special currency. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a gold coin where you, like, you have a gold coin, you give it to somebody, and then you can stay at the Continental. Maybe it's, like, a gold coin per night or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you also pay at the bar with gold coins. You can... uh, If I see another undercover assassin on the ground, like out in New York or wherever mm-hmm. and I need help from him I can get him a gold coin it's all this special okay. currency but you also have the US dollars and everything like that mm-hmm. so it's kind of a global thing essentially in the first movie John Wick is a retired hitman like this and I guess it's impossible to get out of this type of business you okay. either die or you're in it forever mm-hmm. until you die so he has retired because of love he, he found a, a woman that he loves nice. so he's retired from that he had to uh, do like you don't see this Okay. This this all happens before the movie starts. But he had to do a uh, like one last job for somebody to finalize his debt, mm-hmm. and then he was done. He was out. Okay. And then um, everyone knows John Wick in the business. Mm-hmm. He is the number one. He's like the he is child. the top. They call him the ghost. You never see him coming. Yeah. He will get anything done. Mm-hmm. You need someone to do something discreetly. Yeah. You go to him. You go to him. He is the top. He is number one. Everyone respects him more than anybody else. Um, it was actually funny. There is and in the second movie, they reference part of his past where he's an expert killer, mm-hmm. and there's a rumor that he killed three people with one pencil in a room. What? Yeah, so no. awesome. And then and they they go on. They keep talking rumors and rumors and rumors. Mm-hmm. And essentially, an onlooker who is part of the conversation but not talking mm-hmm. essentially says. Every rumor you've heard about John Wick is downplayed. He is much worse than that. Oh my god. It's gosh. so sick. I want to see these movies they're, now. They're so, so they're awesome. Um, there is a new form of martial arts that takes place only in this movie. It's called Gun Fu. You might have seen some things. It's where John Wick uses essentially guns as an extension of his person. Mm-hmm. It's very violent and very gory. Yeah. Um, so where he'll be doing Kung Fu and he'll be doing like this Krav Maga stuff. Mm-hmm. But he'll also have a gun. So he always... Triple taps people. Two in the chest, one in the head. And he does That's that. So, so he's martial artsing people at the same time, but mm-hmm. also triple tapping people from across. He is 100% perfect accuracy. It's so crazy. He uh, People invade his house, mm-hmm. and uh, actually both of them actually, and like he takes care of them, as mm-hmm. you would expect him to do. Sure. And then the coolest, literally the coolest parts of this movie is that his house is torn to shreds because of the fighting and all the bloodshed. Mm-hmm. He calls up what they call the cleaners. Yeah. And he gives them a gold coin. And yeah. they come in and fix his house completely within like two weeks. Nice. Back to brand new. So it's like, the reason I like these movies so much is because there's 
they've built a universe that's so great and it's mm-hmm. so like understood. They don't explain it. Mm-hmm. They don't need to explain it. Right. It's just understood that these things happen because of the respect and because of the currency that they have. Hmm. So he'll give them a gold coin. Or he has a car um, that he's very fond of. His car gets destroyed, mm-hmm. like just sma- just mangled. Um, a guy comes by that works for the organization that he's friends with, yeah. and he gives him a gold coin, and the guy's like, okay, I'll have it ready for you when I can. Like, there's no questions, there's yeah. no anything. And another great thing is some, I guess you can assume that everybody knows what he does, but a lot of times, because in the first movie he's retired, mm-hmm. uh, he'll be attacked, and this is after his house gets kind of, and the fight kind of gets Trashed destroyed. Up. Right. Um, they have, like, a the fire, maybe, like, a policeman come up and try to figure it all out, mm-hmm. and like, hey, John, and the guy's like, oh, hey, Bill, whatever his name is. Yeah. And the Bill, the police officer's like, you working again? Like, everyone just Everybody knows. knows. <laughs> Everybody knows. Oh, that's and so cool. he's like, no, I'm retired. He's like, oh, okay. And then that's the end of the conversation. Dang. But it's so, there's, it's incredible. Like, the the fighting is fine. The fighting is good. I like the gun fu. The story is good. The reason I like these movies so much is because the universe is so fleshed out without mm-hmm. them beating you over the head with it. Good. It's just cool. It's it's a respect. It's honor bound, mm-hmm. and it's crazy. So, sounds like a cool world. It's so awesome. I, I, I highly see recommend it for everybody. The chapter two, it was a sequel, just as good as the first. Really? I I mean, it came out on February tenth. Yeah. And I saw it February eleventh. So on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm still at a ninety one percent. Dang, um, that's pretty high. But highly recommend it if anybody has time tonight and wants to watch John Wick. And you just want to see an action movie because at the core it's an action movie, mm-hmm. but it's so awesome. Also needs to be mentioned in John Wick number two. John Wick again played by Keanu Reeves. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in. No. Is in John Wick number two. Who is Did Morpheus? They make a reference. Uh, <laughs> nothing so obvious yeah, yeah. that I could tell. Mm-hmm. Maybe something that maybe went over my head a little bit, but they do have a conversation that where it's Neo and Morpheus, yeah. and they have a conversation. That's it's funny. so awesome. Um, so yeah, definitely. There, uh, the way that two ended, it could be expected for there to be a third. Mm-hmm. Um, but highly recommend this movie to anybody that wants to see an action movie. It is rated R mm-hmm. um, for violence. I don't remember ever seeing any nudity or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually kind of stray away from nudity with tricky camera angles, so you don't see anything. That's nice. Um, which is nice. But uh, language, I would say they do a really weird thing with captions, where John Wick is kind of a man of little word, few mm-hmm. words. I mean, he's he is a linguist. He can. He knows, like, every language. Okay. Um, and instead of their closed captions on the very bottom of the screen, all in the same font and everything, mm-hmm. uh, they kind of put it in the middle of the screen, large, because the, the sentences are so short. Mm-hmm. And the power words in the sentence, they make a different font and different color. Cool. So, highly recommend it to anybody. So good. Dang. That wasn't planned, and we just talked about that. Yeah. That awesome. sounds really awesome. So fun. Back to the news. Yeah. E3, Entertainment Expo. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the other E is. Uh, I don't either. It's going to be open to the public what? Uh, in 2017. What? Yeah, so it used to just be for uh, press. Yeah, because we looked like at that. going last year. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's fun. It's, that could be good for the gamers because um, some, well, a lot of people watch E3 for stream it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but this could be more directed towards gamers as opposed to news outlets, yeah. right? So they're going to have more hands-on things. Uh mm-hmm. Ubisoft always gets made fun of because of their 2016 presentation was like four days long. It's not really four days. It was like 45 minutes long. It mm-hmm. went over by like 20 minutes. It was just game after game after game after game after game. Mm-hmm. And Ubisoft? Yeah. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Everyone makes fun of them. So mm-hmm. maybe this one will be more streamlined for everybody. Yeah. Just like more for the players. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. Um, so good news. Yeah. If you're in the area, go to E3. Yeah. I see it. We're not in the area. We are not. Uh, so there's a game that we play that is related to another game that we don't play, and in that, there's some news. Blizzard. Oh, okay. Makes Overwatch. A lot. Which we have, they make a lot of money, they make a lot of games. Uh, we've played Overwatch quite a bit, and if you've listened to us, you know you just bought a how we feel about it. Overwatch thing. I did. I got a little, 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 uh, statue guy of Soldier 76. They have... Well, explain to him what it is. Explain how you bought it. So there's these boxes, and yeah. inside there's loot, and it's random it's which um, like little statue figurine is in the box. But on the back it has a... But it has like a list of all the ones that you could get. All the possible ones, mm-hmm. and it's not. It's all Blizzard properties. It's not just Overwatch. Yeah, and so I think 
almost half were, were were Overwatch, and then yeah. there was a few from Diablo and a few from World of Warcraft. Hearthstone, something. Like and that. yeah, well, I mean, Hearthstone, Hearthstone is, is World of Warcraft. Yeah. So um, with that, I was like, I really want a Pharah because Pharah is like my girl right now in this in this yeah. game. And they had two, and a Nubus one looked sick. So I was like, oh, I can't wait. And then I opened it up, got Soldier seventy six. I was oh, happy. A little disappointed. A little bit because I want a Pharaoh, but at but the same you, time, I have more hours on 76 than I do on Pharaoh. So I was like, true. this is probably fine. This works. This is okay. And then I tried to convince you to put it on my shelf. Yeah. Or have all my other gaming stuff, and you said... I said, no, I'm putting it on okay, my later. desk at school. Nah. So, uh, there's that. That was pretty cool. By the way, so there's a character. This. Back to the root of all this thing. Uh, Lucio is a new character for Heroes of the Storm. So if you're a fan of uh, Mobus, which I believe it is... Uh, kind of like League of Legends. Uh, Blizzard has their own version of it. They just added Lucio to to the characters, and uh, not the first character they added. I think Zarya's in it too. Probably, I think so. Uh, but Lucio is their newest character they yes. added. Said here's the storm. So Overwatch is making its appearance in uh, Heroes. That's like I love it. I get like it. Like it. That's what, uh, okay, that's what it sounded okay. like what you just said. Uh, Blizzard <laughs> kind of has a shared universe. Yeah, similar to the Marvel movies, uh-huh. MCU, mm-hmm. and it's fun. It's fun. To see. It is really cool. I like Blizzard's. Properties, I think they're awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And if I were to play a MOBA, it would be uh, Heroes of the Storm because I played League of Legends once, and the whole community just hated me the whole time. You played Smite. I played Smite. We gotta play Paladins. Oh yeah, we gotta do that too. You gotta download Paladins. I haven't yet. I wonder why. I know you're gonna ask it, dude. I've been busy this weekend. You know that. So, anyways, that's that. Uh, let's move on to something else. What so, really interesting esports news came yeah, out this week. This is so cool. This is actually. Might be some of the most interesting esports news that's came out definitely in 2017. Maybe within since E League was on ESPN mm-hmm. or E League was on TBS. Yeah, and that is the NBA National Basketball Association, the NBA. So like Golden State Warriors, Cavaliers, uh, Pacers, all those teams. Yeah, uh, is going to be running an esports sector for NBA 2K. So the teams that play in the NBA 2K games, mm-hmm. there's going to be tournaments very similar to what you'd expect when you're watching. Uh, basketball on TV. Mm-hmm. There's going to be bracket play, there's going to be pool play, there's, well, maybe not pool play. There's going to be, well, I assume there's going to be pool play just because there's going to be so many people. Mm-hmm. Bracket play, there's going to be championships and stuff like that. This is going to be run by the actual basketball clubs. They're going to be ran by the Pacers. They're going to be ran by the Lakers, the Cavaliers, the, Bulls, the right, everybody. Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, so legitimate sports teams are going to be running esports teams. This is huge. It's amazing. This is incredible. That's a huge step by a by major sports yes. organization to start an esport league, right? We we've heard stories before of people in sports supporting um, esports. I I remember last year we read off some stuff about some in, NFL players who owned a team in esports, but this is a whole another step where sports franchises are going to have a role in esports. They're going to have teams. The NBA is supporting this. Like, yeah. What the heck? This is, this is unheard incredible. of before. It's incredible. From the article on Polygon, uh, I just lost my track. Uh, Take Two, who d- makes 2K games, who makes uh, the NBA 2K games. Uh, Take Two and the NBA said in a news release that the NBA 2K E League will be the first official esports league operated by a U.S. professional sports league. The five person esports teams in the E League will be run by the real life NBA clubs. Although it's unclear if each of the NBA's 30 franchises will operate its own squad in the E-League. So, they're going to be ran by the clubs. We don't know if every club is going to have a team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the competition in the E-League will, in the uh, NBA 2K E-League, will resemble, real, will resemble the structure of a traditional sports schedule. Head-to-head matchups over the course of a regular season, followed by bracket-based playoff setup, leading to a championship showdown. Yeah. So very similar to how you would do basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very interesting to me. Yeah, it is. And thanks, again, credit to Polygon for this article. Yes. Uh, very interesting to me because, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. most sports games, there are teams that generally play better than other teams. Yeah. Um, the, I can think individual players the ranked. last sports game I played, mm-hmm. Madden 2005. Wow, that's a long time ago. The Patriots were... Top dogs. They were like number one, mm-hmm. and then other teams were below them, and then you have like the Buccaneers at like way low. Yeah. So what happens in the two K games when the Cavaliers and the Warriors are ranked like a ninety nine percent? Right. And you have like the, the Milwaukee Bucks are the, like the Bucks ranked yeah. at like a seventy eight percent. What if the Bucks owned a team 
Mm-hmm. Would they be okay with their player playing as the Cavaliers? Or do they have to play as the Milwaukee right. Bucks? We don't know what that what that actually entails. And do they make their own characters that go on the teams? Or I would not. Like how does it that. how does that what does that look like? You know? What does it look like? I don't know what the what two K esports looks like because I don't I know that they had a uh, they had a big Madden tournament this year, um, before the Super Bowl. Mm. Um, and they also have done basketball tournaments as well. I don't know how that works. I, and their own there's players that are owned by like Cloud9, by Luminosity, by CLG, by sure. uh, Liquid. But they can play whatever team they want. What happens when the Lakers own somebody that wants to play as the Cavaliers? Yeah. I don't know. It's like, weird. What are they going to do? I don't know. Do they get to play? I assume you would want them to play and win. Right. But what would the headlines be like? Right. On the couple of news segments that actually cover this. Yeah. Charlotte's Hornets player plays as Warriors to beat. <laughs> I don't know. To beat the Lakers Cavaliers. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just confusing, you know. But anyways, it is a big step for esports. I mean, to get a major sports organization to, to do this. I mean, this is big news. And we'll see we'll see the details of it as it becomes more realist. When it gets close to actual dropping and then when it actually goes, we'll see what it actually looks like. Um, but it's just, you know, it's it's interesting that this is happening. Something you take note of. We've talked about this before, and I'll bring it up again because we talked about it a long time ago. Mm. Um, but esports is a growth industry of NBA athletes and owners with multiple individuals affiliated with the league buying into esports organizations over the past few years. Okay. Uh, the list includes former L.A. Lakers player Rick Fox, who owns League of Legends team, Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal, who is invested, who is an investor for NRG Esports, the team, uh, NBA legend Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, who holds a majority stake in the esports organization Team Liquid, alongside Ted Leonosis and Peter, Peter Gruber, both who own, both of whom own NBA teams, and the Philadelphia Sixers, who bought Team Dignitas in a and Apex Gaming last fall. We've talked about all that before. Yeah. But those are some specific names, some specific teams. Yeah. Um, we love esports. We do. And we think it's a growth industry. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they think it is too. So very good news. There you have it. For our friends that play video games. Yep. Which is, which is you, the listener. Yep. Welcome, listener. Yep. 47 minutes in and welcome. So, uh... Speaking of gaming. Lastly... I guess, right? Yeah. This is this is it. This is kind of just a news episode. Um, anything. GameStop 